Hello, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we will be talking about womb wellness, Ayurvedic rituals for every season of life. And to help us out with this topic, we have the wonderful Ashley Holmes. And she is the CEO and founder of Holistic Fertility Coach. She supports women struggling with infertility to align and balance their mind, body, and spirit to conceive with ease. But I just want to put it out there. When we talk about fertility in women, we're talking about optimizing their hormones, health, and well-being. So even for those who are like, I don't want to conceive, this episode is still for you because it's still very relevant as a woman to have this information because it helps you with your overall well-being and hormones right because that's what helps us conceive so this wisdom is for every season of life welcome to the podcast ashley thank you for the intro i'm excited to be here and to have this conversation thank you and to start the conversation i actually kick it off with some rapid inspiration questions just so we get to know you a little bit more on that sort of personal fun side. So the first one is, what's the most unconventional or unexpected thing on your bucket list? Unexpected thing? Probably surfing in Costa Rica. <laughs> oh, I love it. I, I really want to go to Costa Rica. Have you been? I have not been. So it's still on the list. Yeah, as well it's, as I would love to visit an ashram in India and to have that full experience mm -hmm. because I think there would be nothing like it. Totally, and my last guest actually said that as well as her. What's on her bucket list? So it's a theme today. <laughs> and if you had a uh, theme song for your life, what would it be and why? Oh, wow, you know what? It would probably be Bob Marley because I walked down the aisle to Bob Marley and it would probably be one of his songs or like Jack Johnson because it was just like an era for me. I married my husband in New Zealand and it was just, you know, we lived on the beach <laughs> and now I'm back in Canada. So, but for a long time, that was the energy, that was the vibration. And I think that when you listen to something that's positive and uplifting and just like puts you in that feel good place or takes you back to that moment in time there's nothing like it right we all hear that song and it takes you back instantly totally so when you lived on the beach did you surf I did surf I learned to surf there yes beautiful and last one what's your favorite food and why my favorite food I love sushi not wasabi sushi <laughs> does not agree with the pizza in me so <laughs> yeah <laughs> not a my, yeah that is my go-to yeah, nice yeah my husband loves wasabi I just I can't do it like yeah, sushi but not wasabi so I agree with you there <laughs> <laughs> so as a fertility coach you incorporate Ayurvedic principles into your practice how did you first discover the connection between Ayurveda and women's health and in the context of fertility? Really, it was my own fertility journey and of me landing on my yoga mat and beginning to train and beginning to dive deeper and to embody these practices and discovering that by doing so, I brought myself back into balance and alignment easily, quickly, naturally and conceived very quickly versus having to use a medical clinic and doing it the hard way the first time around and really finding the answers that I was seeking that I couldn't find from traditional medical intervention. Mm, that's a similar story to me. Um, not so much with fertility, but post giving birth and having hormonal imbalances, it was Ayurveda that really helped me. And I think that happens with a lot of um, health and wellness practitioners or coaches. They find their own path and are just so passionate about helping others through that path because it was such a life changing experience for themselves. So, yeah, I definitely hear that a lot with 
women who are in this space they've experienced it and they're just like I need to share Ayurveda with the world and how much it helped me and how much it can help everyone and I love that people are shouting about it from the rooftops now and it's really getting out there into mainstream and by saying mainstream I mean it's always been mainstream it's like the oldest sort of medicine known to man it's a holistic health science it is a medicine but what we now call mainstream is different from what the traditional roots of holistic health and medicine was. Ayurveda really emphasizes the importance of aligning daily routines, which we call dinacharya with a season. So how do these seasons change, the, the changes of the seasons, I should say, influence women's health? And what rituals do you recommend for different seasons? Definitely to work in harmony with the seasons, right? And to not incorporate things that throw you more out of balance than bring you into balance. So, you know, for me right now, I'm in the Northern Hemisphere and we're in winter. And so what is ideal for me, it would not be ideal for you right now because you're in the Southern Hemisphere and you're in the middle of summer. So knowing that I can work with anybody in whichever season they're in, but there's certain things that apply to us at certain times. And just coming into the new year, this isn't the time of year that we want to be detoxifying and cleansing. You know, those are more safe for the spring and the fall. And it's just this inner wisdom that can help us, that can guide us. And for the longest time, being a pizza, I would do things that would throw me more out of balance, such as teaching hot yoga and eating spicy food and just having that wisdom and offering it to others so that they can be more in tune and alignment with how their whole body is functioning, what works best for them, and to a be able to course correct that as they're moving through things so that it doesn't create further imbalances within them. Mm. And I believe once you start to really understand the, the elements, the Ayurvedic elements and the doshas, it does become an intuitive medicine, but you have to learn that first because often we don't understand why we're feeling out of balance or what what our own unique mind body constitution is and the things that we did have impacted that to create that imbalanced state but once we can understand that we can really use the wisdom to be able to create more of a balanced state for ourselves and it becomes just really yeah, like I said, really intuitive, which is beautiful because you can apply it every day to feel feel the best that you possibly can in that day, in that time. Talking more in relationship to women's health and the menstrual cycle, Ayurveda, in Ayurveda, the menstrual cycle is often viewed in harmony with the lunar cycle. So can you explain how understanding this natural rhythm can benefit women's overall well-being and their hormones and their fertility? I wish there was more education about our cycles, you know, at a young age when we first get them because we're really not given the proper information that we should slow down, we should listen to our bodies, and we should really take that time to rest and sort of go inward, and that we're not meant to be on the go and live this yang lifestyle day in and day out, which is often so ingrained in us. So it really is just this learning and listening because we're always getting these signals and messages on a daily basis, but we often are overriding them with our thinking and analytical brain. So it really is that slowing down, which isn't easy for a lot of us and giving us the time and space to connect with our bodies, to listen to our bodies and to pay attention to our bodies and to trust our bodies. Because I know for myself and part of the struggle that I experienced was feeling less than, feeling broken. And that's how often women come to me is, can you fix me? And it's really beginning to love and nourish your body on a whole deeper level. Mm, absolutely and in relationship to the lunar cycle like the full because I know I have a lot of women who've come to me with hormonal imbalances and they get really upset because they have been told that if they're not bleeding on the full moon or the new moon they're out of sync with their femininity and all of this kind of stuff and whilst we do have a 
I mean, we Ayurveda is based on the fact that we ha- we are nature. We have a strong correlation to the nature, the circadian rhythms, all of those things. But whilst this is true, it is also true that we don't have to specifically bleed on one of these days. And if we do or if we don't, we're broken or we're healthy. And that becomes a real stress for some women. So even for instance, women who aren't menstruating. So there are women for many reasons aren't menstruating. Some of them are on the contraceptive pill. Some of them have gone through menopause. Some of them have amenorrhea for different reasons and um, different causes. Some have been through chemo, cancer, which has, um, you know, or, or have thyroid disorders, which has also impacted their cycle. And if they're not having a natural cycle, then often I will suggest to women that they align with the rhythm of the moon so they can still be a cyclical being as women are and appreciate the different cycles of the moon in order to help balance their hormones and to to flow with that natural rhythm. What do you have to say about the lunar cycle and the menstrual cycle? Like, how do you see that in your practice? Really, it's to the degree in which someone wants to embody that and explore that. And sometimes they're open and sometimes they're not seeing the the connection of the big picture of how everything is connected, how everything flows. And there's no right or wrong, but it's seeing what we can tune into and how we can adjust and modify to have that balance and to really work with our stress hormones. So that's not what is being predominantly released day in and day out and to find those relaxation hormones instead and to have that and to be able to come back to that day in and day out. Mm. And talking about stress, Ayurveda really acknowledges the impact of stress on fertility. So what specific Ayurvedic rituals or practices do you suggest for managing stress and promoting a calm and nourishing environment for women? Definitely big offerings of mine are yoga and meditation, as well as, you know, like I'm wearing a mala necklace right now. That is something that you can do. You can use a mantra and that can help you stay connected and quiet the inner chatter of the mind by having that to do either at the end of your yoga practice to start your day to incorporate that at some time. It's really, really powerful, whether it's just the sacred sound of Om and you do that. Um, You know, there's pranayama and breathing exercises that are so powerful and just that mind-body connection and using your breath as the anchor in those moments of stress. It's so important to have these tools and resources that we all have that are available to us that perhaps we haven't explored enough yet. And Ayurveda encourages tongue scraping and dry brushing. And there's so many things that we can do for ourselves day in and day out to help us feel in tune and in sync with our own bodies. Mm, Beautiful. And just coming back to the concept of Ritu Asanti, which in Ayurveda highlights the transitional periods between the season, so the junction between the season, how can women adapt their self-care rituals during these transitions to support hormonal balance and fertility? It really is so important when transitioning to have those grounded daily routines that keep you centered, that keep you present and aware because oftentimes, you know, right now it's winter here. It's Vata season is predominant. You know, we can be more and stay more in our heads. So it's really important to have those grounding sort of practices to eat those grounding sort of foods, you know, as you try transition from summer into fall and fall into winter that you can have herbs and things that support you and that truly nourish you and that create that balance within you and then you feel and see that harmony within you and you're not thrown by things so much and you know how to course correct so that you feel your best and you know that if you do indulge or if you have something that perhaps isn't ideal for you, you know how that's going to feel, you know the effects that that's going to have, and everything is a choice. 
Mm. Yeah, and we've mentioned the the doshas, the three doshas, Vata, Pitta, and Kapha, um, throughout this episode. They all play a crucial role in Ayurveda, obviously. <laughs> then how do imbalances in these doshas impact women's fertility and what Ayurvedic practices can help restore this balance? The, it's really important to know what your inborn constitution is so that you can work with it. So whether your vata, you don't want to be putting more air and space into your system a lot of times and to work with the seasons, to have yoga practices that support that, that are grounding, that center you. And for pitas, you know, oftentimes you don't want to add more fuel to the fire. You don't need to ignite yourself anymore and to make your flame burn any, any brighter. And for kaphas, sometimes, you know, they can be a bit stagnant or, you know, they need a little bit more of flow, a little bit more movement, a little bit um, to get them going, to keep them going, because they are often very grounded people to begin with. And it's just that knowing and working with it so that you feel your best in all areas of your life and it ripples out in all areas of your life, right? It's not just what you eat. It's your daily routines. It's your your practices that you do day in and day out and to know that by doing them they give you time they don't take time and i think that's just the key to really sustaining your health and wellness and really this is a holistic lifestyle it's not a quick fix it's not a trend it's not a diet it's not a fad it really works with you for the rest of your life and nourishes you optimally Mm, beautiful. And for yourself, what are some of the practices that you do daily to help balance your dosha? You, you mentioned your pitta dosha. So what practices are you doing daily to help that? Daily, what has been really such a big shift for me that has really helped me the most is to begin my day with meditation and to not be pulled out of bed by my children anymore with mom, but to take that time and space to wake up with intention, to be intentional with my time and my energy, to notice my energy and to, I get on my mat every day and it doesn't matter where that mat is or how long the practice is, but it's that consistency, it's that showing up, it's that clearing out daily, that sort of detoxifying and, you know, a lot of most days I do sun salutations because they that is their specific purpose is it's working all parts of your being and detoxifying, clearing, twisting all of your organs so that you're feeling renewed, you're feeling refreshed, you're feeling energized and you can move through the rest of your day with that. And I think that's often a missing piece that people are seeking, you know. They're doing something they don't necessarily love what they're doing and but it's good for them so they're just doing it anyway but the alignment isn't there the results aren't there because they're not in tune and in sync with their body and i i use my mala necklace every day mm -hmm. i have my dry rush in my bathroom sometimes i hop in and i don't <laughs> remember and you know, Ayurveda is also very big on, and one of the things that I've really taken to the last sort of six months is using oils and using massage and doing face yoga before I go to sleep and just like making that a self-care routine and practice for myself and just knowing the benefits from that. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, it definitely has so much to offer in the way of tapping into our own innate wisdom and being able to provide ourselves with the most wholesome dinacharya or um, the ritu sandhi, the between the seasons, our, it's a lifestyle medicine, it's a holistic medicine and it can really help with all of those type of things. So yeah, it is a beautiful practice. And if anyone does want to learn more about Ayurveda, please reach out. We are, we do have enrollments open for our 2024 um, Ayurveda Alchemist program, which certifies you to become an Ayurveda and women's holistic health coach. So if this is interesting to you and you 
maybe you're already a health and wellness practitioner or yoga teacher, Pilates teacher, and want to be able to offer a really holistic science to your clients to get them even better, faster results, but that are a longer lasting because as as Ashley mentioned, it's a lifestyle. Like it's not something you just do for a week. This is a whole lifestyle change, which only up levels your life in so, so many ways. And yeah, I'm so grateful that I have been able to find this practice for myself and implement it in my life and also my family's life and being able to share it with the world as well and really tap into the wisdom that it offers. So thank you so much um, for your wisdom, Ashley, with Ayurveda and women's health and fertility. Do you have any parting words that we that you would like to share with the audience that we haven't um, spoken yet on the podcast? I would really just love to share that Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga and they work hand in hand together to create that balance in mind, body and spirit. And if you don't already do something for your mind, body, and spirit on a daily basis, I encourage you to. And for your mind, whether that is meditation or journaling and brain dumping so that you're not keeping those thoughts in your head, you can just release them and let them flow. And for your body, do something that you love. Move your body in a way that you love day in and day out that feels good to you, that doesn't feel like work. And... A challenge, maybe, perhaps, but not not a dread. And for your spirit, you know, what makes you feel like you day in and day out and makes you can feel connected to yourself and to take that time, stillness and space to find that and give that to yourself daily. Mm, beautiful, beautiful words, parting words. Where can our listeners find you if they would love to get in contact with you? I would love to welcome you to my Holistic Fertility Coach Facebook group. It's a safe, sacred space where if you're trying to conceive, you are welcome to land there and to take all that is offered. And I bring in other experts that have healing modalities that aren't my main modalities. And I think that together it's just a place to uplift and elevate and heal because our body is always trying to heal itself and come back into a state of harmony Mm, beautiful thank you and thank you so much for being here and for anybody who is streaming in live in the ayurveda and women's health sisterhood facebook group or listening to this via the podcast and thank you so much ashley thank you thank you